Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries. And uh, this, excuse me, last week we left Paul and Silas in prison. Um, what happened when they were in prison? Having received such command, then they went into the inner prison, fastened their feet in the stock, and about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. They were singing and praising hymns. You know, and may I say, if you're a Christian, if you get thrown in prison and you have the joy of the Lord, then sing, pray, and sing hymns. When trouble comes your way, pray and sing hymns. Why? Because the God who's in control of everything has brought that into your life for a reason. You know, it might just be to glorify Him. We all want answers to all our issues in life. And frankly, a lot of a lot of times you won't get the answer. So we're going to pick it up. Paul and Silas, about midnight, were praying and singing hymns to God. And it says, and the prisoners were listening to them. And again, as a Christian, you're being watched somewhere. Somebody's watching. How you handle adversity, how you handle sickness, how you handle anything in your life shows your maturity in the Lord and shows that you know the Lord so careful when you uh, are put to the test you know we all have troubles in life so pick it up at 1626 Acts 1626 okay they're praying singing hymns about midnight the prisoners were listening 26 and suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. Okay, they were praying and singing hymns and as soon as that happened at midnight, God used, God shook the prison through an earthquake. And it was, wasn't an ordinary earthquake because the chains, everybody's, all the prisoners in the prison, their chains fell to the floor. So it was a supernatural act from God. 27. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors opened, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. Okay? The earthquake that God did threw open the doors, threw the chains off all the prisoners. The guard woke up and seen it, and he was going to kill himself. Why? Because according to Roman law, if you were guarding a prisoner and you let that prisoner go, you would die. So he knew, he looked around, he thought everybody was gone. He knew he was going to die by the hands of Rome, his own country. He decided he was going to kill himself before they could. 28. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. So right before he was going to do that, Paul cried out, Don't, don't kill yourself, we're still here. All the prisoners are still in their place. 29, he called for lights, the guard did, and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Why did he tremble with fear? You know, he, he knew that this was not just a natural thing that happened. He knew that these people were not, <laughs> not just ordinary people, and he knew that something extraordinary from God happened here. This is why he was trembling, and he came in trembling to him. 30, and after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And isn't that the question, right? Listen, we're all born in sin. All of us are born headed to hell. You have to be saved in this life. If you're not saved before you die, you end up paying for your own sin and going to hell. And this is a proper question. What must I do, Right? What must I do to be saved? Listen, you can't do anything, but you can believe on Jesus Christ. The Bible, is, the, the scripture, the gospel is turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. First, you, people who don't realize they're a sinner, most people don't think they're that bad. Once you understand the Bible condemns you and everything you've done in your life, God condemns you because the standard is perfection. And you've missed that standard. So what must you do to be saved? Once you know you're a sinner, you got to repent and turn to Christ. Trust in Jesus Christ. Finish work on that cross fully for your salvation. And, you can, and know that you can't do it. That's what saves you. All Christians who are truly saved are not working their way to heaven. They trust Christ. And all the ones who are working their way to heaven are not saved. There's supposed Christians out there that are doing good works and doing things to get there. 
them are the ones that are not saved. So what must he do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, 31. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Okay? Now it doesn't... Number one, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Okay? That's true. Believe on Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And he says, a lot of people get this and the household. If he believes, then the household will be saved automatically. And that's not what it says. If he believes, he'll be saved. And if his household believes, they'll be saved. But listen, salvation comes through, through trust and belief in Jesus Christ and his finished work on that cross. You know, in the Old Testament, Abraham believed God and it was accredited in his righteousness. When you believe the gospel and you believe on Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. There's a transaction that takes place. When you believe on Jesus Christ, Jesus gives you his righteousness and he takes your sin and it's nailed to the cross with him. And it was nailed 2,000 years ago with him. 32, and they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all those who were in his house. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all those. He gave him the gospel and everybody else in the household the gospel. 33, and he took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds. And immediately he was baptized, he and all his household. He took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds. He was good to the disciples, right? 34, and he brought them into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. And this is what happens somebody saved. They believe in God. They rejoice with them in their household. Everybody rejoiced. Because he was saved and his household was saved. God had mercy on all of them. And listen, God has to... According to the Bible, God chooses everybody he saves. You can't... Jesus said you can't come to me unless the Father who sent me draws you. Listen, Christ can save you. There's nothing... There's nothing stopping anybody from being saved. Turn to him. Trust him. Most people will not give up their life and follow him. That's the problem. 35. Now when day came, the chief magistrates sent their policemen saying, Release those men. 36. And the jail reported these words to Paul saying, The chief magistrates have sent to release you. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. Okay, the ones in charge <laughs> wanted to release them. 37, Paul said to them, They have beaten us in public without a trial, men who are Romans, and have thrown us into prison, and now they are sending us away secretly. No indeed, but let them come themselves and bring us out. So Paul was using his Roman citizenship here. He was, uh, the, the chief, the people that did this unlawfully wanted to get him out of there before anybody knew him. Paul said, look, I'm a Roman. Why is that important? Because you couldn't, you couldn't, chain a Roman, you certainly couldn't beat a Roman without a trial. And they did both, so they were to be the ones in trouble. And they were scared of that. 38. The policemen reported these words to the chief magistrates. They were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. Why? Because they could get the death penalty for what they did. You can't, they couldn't charge another Roman citizen and beat him without beat him publicly. 39, they came and appealed to them. And when they had brought them out, they kept begging them to leave the city. Okay, the chiefs kept saying to Paul and Silas, get out of the city. We don't want... They were begging them to get out because they didn't want to get themselves in trouble. 40, they went out of prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they saw the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. But Paul finally left. They finally left. They went back to Lydia's, encouraged the brothers, and then they left. Now look at the, the prison... The prison just enabled the jailer, right, to be saved. The, the guard in his household to be saved, right? Paul's in prison was for other purposes other than Paul. This is what you got to understand in your life. Some pain that you might feel or something that's happening to you might be for somebody else. Might be to get you to somebody else or somebody else to you. So you got to trust the Lord in all the things that he does. Paul and Silas didn't whine them why they were in jail. They didn't, you know, break down and say, God, why are you doing this to me? They sang hymns and prayed to God. God opened the doors. He opened the prison. The guards came in to him. The guard wanted to know how to be saved. Paul and Silas told them. He strengthened them. Then, then the, 
the chief, the magistrates of the city came and tried to get him out quick. And then Paul brought up that he's a Roman citizen that was made him afraid, so they wanted to get him out of there even quicker. All of that, and listen, the guard and his family got saved. Now, is it worth for you to be thrown in prison for somebody else to be saved? Yes. Might happen. You never know. All right, verse 17. Now, when they had traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And this was their custom. They went into a city and went into the synagogue. Two. And according to Paul's custom, they went to them. And for three Sabbaths, reasoned with them from the scriptures. So Paul's habit was to go into town, go into the synagogue, and reason with them. He did for three days here. Three Sabbaths, excuse me. Three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures. And this is what he reasoned with them, verse 3. Explaining and giving evidence that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and saying, Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you, is the Christ. So Paul from the Old Testament reasoned that, look, this is the Messiah. He was trying to tell Jews this. Your Messiah had to suffer and die. He was proving it in the Old Testament scriptures, like from Isaiah and other Psalms and other places. So he proved that their Messiah had to, to suffer. And then he said, look, this Jesus who suffered is your Messiah. And anybody who's got the gospel, look, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He is the Messiah. He is God. you got to come through him. Jesus said, you got to come through me to get to the Father, right? Jesus said, nobody comes to the Father except through me. And this is what all... Let's see, first four. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas along with a large number of God-fearing Greeks and a number of the leading women. Okay? Here's what happens when you give the gospel. When you tell the truth about Jesus Christ, some... And some of them was persuaded. Some of them. Not all of them, but some. You keep giving the gospel out there, some will be saved. Five, but the Jews, becoming jealous and taking along some wicked men from the marketplace, formed a mob and set the city in uproar. And attacking the house of Jason, they were seeking to bring out to the people. Okay, They got a mob together. The wicked Jews got together some wicked people and started a mob, another riot. Six, and when they did not find them, they began dragging Jason and some of his brethren before the city authorities, shouting. Okay, they were looking for the disciples, these, this mob, but they couldn't find them, so they took Jason in his household. Jason and some brethren. And they dragged them before the city authorities, shouting, These men who have upset the world have come here also. Now, listen, the only people that were upsetting the world was this mob. It wasn't Jason and uh, the other, the other believers, it was the mob. Seven, and Jason has welcomed them. Okay, He was accusing Jason of welcoming the people that were causing all the trouble. And they all acted contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. Okay, They were lying, right? There is a king, Jesus, but it wasn't contrary to Caesar. Jesus told, you know, when the coin, who's, he was asked whose picture was on this Greek coin. Jesus said, Caesar. He asked the other disciples whose picture was on it. And they said Caesar's. And he said, give unto Caesar's what's Caesar's and God's what's God's. So there's no issue between human government and God. We're supposed to give to the human government and give to God. Give to both what's due them. So these liars were saying that they were trying to get people to go against Caesar, which is false. Again, when Satan doesn't have anything else, he has lies. Eight, they stirred up the crowd and the city authorities who heard these things. Nine, and when they had received a pledge from Jason and the others, they released them. Here's a pledge saying that they didn't do anything, you know, sometimes it was money. But Jason, it got a pee through Jason, he appeased the mob and he went back, went his own way and they released him. They had nothing on him, that's why, right? The mob looked for the disciples to get them. They couldn't find them, so they dragged the nearest two people to them, Jason and some other believers. And they were released in the end. Again, mob justice, right? <clears throat> Ten, the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night at Berea. 
And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Okay? Paul and Silas went away by night. Why? Because people wanted to hurt them. <laughs> the mob. They would have started another mob if they were seen. So sometimes, listen, sometimes persecution starts and God has you leave to get out of there. Um, 11. Now these were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica. For they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Berea. To be like the Bereans. I think we'll stop here. I hope people who listen to me are, are to be like the Bereans. When they hear things, they check the scripture to see if it's true. Too many Americans, too many people around the world hear something from a preacher on TV or something from a preacher in front of them and they don't really know if it's true or not, but they believe everything they say. It's okay to check. Check and see if what I'm saying is true. And it said here they were more noble than the Thessalonians. The Bereans were because they wanted to know the truth. They heard something and they checked it to make sure. So listen. I hope you want to hear truth. Check it to make sure. If it is the truth, run with it. Run with it. Again, this is how the early church started. Paul and Silas had a bunch of trouble. Listen, trouble is not a sign that you shouldn't do something. Trouble is usually a sign that you should. If you're going to do something for the Lord and trouble arises, that doesn't mean you should shut her down. It means you should keep going. Trouble usually comes when you tell the truth. They prayed, they got released. Satan tried to stir up more people against them. God got them out of there at night, and now they're at the Berea. Berea. And these people are checking what they, what, to make sure that they are God on God's behalf, that they're telling the truth. So they check scripture. and We have the whole Bible. So whatever you hear out there, whether it's from me or anybody else, check. If it is true, and, it's, and it continues to be true, then you can trust the person telling you. But make sure you do the proper checking to begin with. So make sure you can trust the people you're listening to. We're working our way through Acts. This is how the beginning of the church started. This is how we continually spread God's word today. This is how we spread God's word to start new churches today too. Missionaries do this all the time. They go into a, a city. They set up a church. And, you know, and they invite people in. And a few people come. And they spread the word. They do the teaching, they stick around, they keep teaching. You know, it's the same same way. Just keep moving from one place to the other. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.